I'm from Dallas. You know, I was born in Dallas. So uh, I'll tell you what, that's probably the most exciting phone call that I've ever gotten in my career was them saying, hey, guess what? You're going to play Jerry Ewing's son on Dallas and you're going to go home to Dallas to shoot the show. I was like, this can't be real, you know? And then sure enough, I'm shaking Larry Hagman's hand. He asked me if I was ready to play ball. He asked me if I was ready to be a son of a bitch. And uh, <laughs> I, said, I said, you got it. I knew I had big shoes to fit. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Good, brother. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, thank you. Um, really appreciate you coming on, man, taking time during all this. <laughs> all, all this crazy stuff, whatever this is, right? <laughs> yeah there's a new there's a new word for it right every week it seems like uh you know th to be honest with you this has gone on way longer than i thought uh initially um in february i remember and then just yeah. really south by for me i live in austin and and um had a lot of stuff planned during south by here like i do every year and when that got canceled that for me was okay they've never canceled south by or anything like this so i just knew yeah like, yeah, this is not, this is not good. It's, it's, it's been insane, man. I mean, I, I personally, I'm, I'm in LA right now, but I have for the most part been out of LA for the, for most of the year because this city's, you know, it's pretty much shut down. And, um, I sat on my couch for a month in the first month of it. And I was like, I don't over this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I gained like seven pounds or something and I'm going, what am I doing here, man? This is ridiculous. So <laughs> I got out of LA, flew to Oklahoma, hung out with family, went to Dallas for a bit, uh, and uh, then Nashville and Wisconsin and Arkansas. I've been I've been all over the middle of the country. It's been good. Okay, right on, dude, man, that's awesome. Yeah. I, wish I could. I wish, um, you know, I wish I could get. I'm getting antsy, man. To be honest with you, I'm getting real antsy, and I think everybody is. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. It's um, you know, I'm thankful, you know, for you know, being able to have my job like this, I can do the podcast. I mean, we used to do it at a studio, but you know, do it from home, right? Like everybody can do that. It's not a big deal. Uh, sure. But still, you know, I can't go. I, I used to climb a lot um, and that's something I can't really do um, right now. Not the same way anyway. Uh, Rock climb? Yeah. Yeah. So that, well, in gyms, not, I'm not out like Alex. Or whatever I was going to say, in Texas kind of flat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there are a, lot of, a lot of good rock climbing out there. It's like Utah, huh? Yeah, real real easy climbs. Let me tell you. They're yeah. <laughs> just like herbs, things like that. That's what I climb. Okay, uh, there you go. <laughs> no, you know, they got these gyms or whatever you go to. That That's all I'm uh, willing to do, to be honest with you. I'm not an adventurous uh, person as far as that goes. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I I did a movie in Utah, and, um, and my, my character – had to rock climb so i ended up getting certified as a what's it called the belayer is that right yeah yeah that's what i'm certified to yeah i got all okay that. um so there's some there's some gyms that are you know 50 60 70 feet high walls and then you got some gyms that are just i think it's called bouldering right where it's just like 15 20 feet and there's a big mat at the bottom kind of deal totally totally yeah they but honestly um a lot of gyms have both mine actually has a great has both of those has a lot of bouldering to be honest with you but you know has okay walls as well the bouldering is like i would say that's for people that really know how to climb now i do do that but um not like i mean you got people that are literally climbing up right like just these yeah that, that like they're like literally like upside down yeah you know, hanging on by a pinky it's that did you ever see that sylvester stallone movie from the 90s cliffhanger of course i mean come on that's what i think of every time i'm out there like oh, yeah exactly me. Oh, Sly, Sly Stone. Love yeah. that guy. <laughs> well, let's talk about you, man. Let's talk about you a little bit about, um, look, I watched, um, you know, some of your stuff uh, over the past week here. I know that you were coming on. Um, you know, you had a great show recently, um, The Arraignment, right? That's what it yeah. was called. It was, it was quite a big deal, actually. The more I started to read in the behind the scenes show, um, just as far as like, 
you know, being one of only two shows produced, you know, so it's sort of a new avenue of, of getting sure. Out. Um, that was a great project, man. Obviously had a lot of uh, fan support and everything behind a great creator, you know, yeah. him and just talk to us a little bit about that, man, what your experience was and everything. You know, that show, it was, first of all, it was unique. Um, there, you know, there's, we have a lot of doctor shows and legal shows and cop shows. And, you know, this show was, uh, people wanted to say that it was kind of based off of Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes. I mean, we let him say that it wasn't really, I mean, it's, you know, it, but it, it, it was, I guess in a way similar, right? So I played Kyle West, who was within the story, he, the biggest movie star in the world. And um, he's got a very interesting life and he meets a young and up and, up and coming actress and he absolutely falls in love with her uh, right from the get go and uh, offers her a contract for marriage. He was also, uh, which, which is obviously, a, a, you know, it's, it's actually a real thing that, that has happened. That's been happening in, you know, since the beginning of Hollywood, but offers her a contract for marriage. He's the face of, if you want to call it a cult, we called it a, uh, kind of a, uh, it was the Institute of the Higher Mind. So yeah. uh, some people, you know, liked to compare that to Scientology, which I don't know much about Scientology. I've been out in Hollywood for 20 years. I just never really looked into it. But uh, uh, when it came to our show, the arrangement, it was just, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was unique. It was shot beautifully. You know, our, our, our writer, Jonathan Abrams, he, I mean, he, he, he's a guy who wrote Mad Men, you know, he's an Emmy winning writer and, um, Christine, my co-star was so damn good. And, uh, Michael Vartan, my other co-stars, he's, he's, I mean, that guy's just, he's a movie star he's, he's badass. So he and I got along really, really well. And, um, I got to go to Vancouver to shoot the show, which have you been to Vancouver? No, man. I've, I've only been to Toronto in Canada to be honest. Got it. Man, Vancouver is, it's just such a, such a beautiful city, man. Um, and, uh, I, I became a runner because of that city. They, they've got like the seawall and this whole kind of trail that just goes for miles around a park. And, uh, so we shot 80% of the show in Vancouver, the other 20%, all the exterior stuff that you would know and recognize from LA, we shot here in LA, um, uh, which has been a long time since I shot anything in LA because everything leaks, you know, no, nothing shoots here anymore. Yeah. Unless you're doing like a sitcom and you're on the studios at Warner Brothers or Universal or something. Um, yeah, there, uh, uh, so I, I got to shoot here a little bit. We even shot with season one, we went to Venice. I mean, I'd been to Venice before Venice, Italy, Yeah. but like to shoot something there was just incredible. I, I mean, imagine that must've been great. Absolutely. Was it a local it, crew as well? Uh, in Venice? Yeah. In Venice. Yeah. We had this guy named Luca. He was, uh, <laughs> Anything that's ever shot in Venice, that motherfucker. Oh, excuse my language. Sorry. No, no, we we curse on here. I mean, it's open open podcast. Okay, no gotcha. Yeah. Uh, anything shot in Venice, that guy was the uh, essentially the, the first AD. He was the guy that he knew all the locals. So, like, if you're in Venice shooting a scene, an old Italian woman coming home from the grocery store is not going to care, and she'll walk right through your scene and not care at all. <laughs> I mean, legit, like bag of groceries cussing us out in Italian saying, get away, get out of, get you know, it's, it, uh, but that's what was great about it. It was, it's, it's almost like shooting in a weird way, like in New York, but not obviously it's very two different places, but sure. in New York, in New York, you got to just steal shots and get, and you just got to get what you can get. You can't really control those streets. Um, so it, 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 Venice was great. Venice was, was really great. And by the way, it, it, isn't it like sinking or something? Like, what's going on a little bit? <laughs> totally, man. I think uh, I think you're right. Well, shit, you were there. Um, yeah, as far as I know, it's it it's definitely having problems. I'm a little worried about those guys out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, can we like, you know, can we like figure out some sort of like massive flotation devices to keep that city afloat? Because <laughs> it's a great place. It's a great place. Yeah. Um, uh, it's weird now you see people taking pictures and stuff and they're in a foot and a half of water and you're like that doesn't look safe no, not at all yeah i mean look the world's a lot of different places are changing because of the water rising miami even new york right they even talk about manhattan um wow. you know being being somehow affected later on if if it were to continue to rise at the level it's rising look i'm not a uh, science person like you know what i mean i'm regurgitating shit here i've, I've mm -hmm. 
Uh, we, we can we can act like we know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's. Yeah, no, Manhattan's uh, water levels risen two and a half inches in the last thirty-seven years. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they say fifty-seven percent of all statistics are made up anyway. So it, I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like these Corona statistics, right? It's like, yeah. what are we doing here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to know. Uh, and, and I'm not making light of it. I'm I'm really not because uh, it's it's a scary thing that we're all living in, but. You know, for me, it's just frustrating when, I mean, like I said, I traveled to six different states in the last four months and met 10 different people that, you know, that got a test result in the mail that said they were positive of COVID and they never took a freaking test. Like they didn't even take a test. They're like, why am I getting this? I just don't know what's going on anymore. And it just sucks that, you know, we can't have more of a, uh, uh, something that we can rely on to know what's happening and what's real so that we can fix this deal. And, uh, you know, all these false positives and everything else, it's just, it's sad because it's a scary time and it is a real thing, but, you know, uh, it's, I don't know, we don't have to go into that, but it's just, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a crazy time, right? It's a crazy time, one of the craziest times in the history of the world, definitely in, you know, our generation, our lifetime. 100%, 100%, nothing yeah. like, nothing to compare it to, right? Nothing to like, look back on and go, oh, okay, this is how I got through that this is how I'll, I'll get through this, you know? I mean, this, this the, the 2020 is just like, like, yeah, can we, let's get over this shit already. Great, dude. I, I was so excited actually for 2020. I'll be honest when it came around. So was I. You know, right? Like the twenties. Okay, here we go. We're going to do Yeah. It. And then I mean, sucker punch. It's, this has been like, it's like, okay, enough already. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ah, I, it's, uh, it's, it's an odd time. It's an odd time. And, uh, but I am an optimist and I do believe that, that this will pass and that, uh, me too. you know, that, that we're going to learn a lot from what, what, what's happening right now. Um, not just with the whole COVID deal, but with, uh, just society in general. And, and, um, you know, I'm hoping that at the end of this, cause, cause I, I have lost people this year. I, I posted a video a couple of weeks ago. I lost three friends in one day. Um, none of them to COVID, but, but to crazy stuff. And, and, uh, it's just been a, it's been a freaking hard year, you know, my industry shut down. So, uh, so there's nothing for us to do, but I, luckily I also do music. So I've been able to, um, I'm making some really big strides in music, which is, I'm super stoked about. Um, and uh, like it, I'm pretty much in talks to be working with, one of the biggest most prolific songwriters in country music history and he and i are going to start we've already written together but um yeah i think we're gonna kind of uh, he, he's gonna be a part of my team to get to get the song on the radio and to, to do it big so i'm really excited about that that's awesome man that is yeah. incredible you can't say who it is. i mean i'm not pressuring you this isn't live either so i'm just asking oh sure sure yeah yeah uh no it, it's uh it, so crazy story that, that's what makes this whole thing great is that uh, his name is Dallas Davidson, big time writer out in, out in Nashville. Um, there's not many people in the history of country music that have more number ones than, than he's written. Uh, one night I get a phone call. Uh, uh, one night I get a phone call and, and I, I don't know, you know, uh, it's pretty late. I don't know uh, who it was. And the next day it was him. And he was like, he, he, I'm pretty sure the message started with, John Ross, this is Bobby. JR is Bobby. This is Bobby. He was doing like a, almost like a, like a JR impression of talking to Bobby Ewing. And, uh, and I didn't know what was going on. And then he said his name and he said, I heard you do country music. Hit me up. And I, and, and uh, I was like, holy crap, Dallas Davidson just left me a voicemail and we had never met. And um, I, I believe he's going to kill me if I'm wrong, but, uh, he, his, he was named after the show. Like his parents were massive fans of the show. And, oh. and, um, so that's why he, he was watching the, sh the new one. And, uh, and he somehow got my number, called me and, um, I was like, Oh wow. You want to do music with me? Okay. I'll be on the next flight out. Let's write. And, um, that was a few years ago and, um, kind of, we just cultivated a relationship. He's a great dude. And, the guy's just so talented. It's insane. You know, Nashville in general is an, an, an incredible city. And uh, have you ever been to Nashville? Oh yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. I love oh, oh my god. I mean, it's it really uh, is. Here you go. You got great people, good food, bars are open late, great music. What else do you need? Yeah, and it still has that small town feel in a lot of ways, right? Like it's growing quick. It's it's. Right. I mean, even in like even in the last five years, you know, you talk to the people that live there, and they're like, what the hell is this traffic? Like, what the hell is this? This didn't exist five years ago. Now, you know. Sounds like Austin. It, honestly. Uh, you know, it kind of sounds like freaking everywhere. It's like, <laughs> like, like everywhere's growing. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. I, when, I, when I was doing the show Dallas in Dallas. Yeah, think about Dallas. How much has Dallas changed? It, it looked like Vegas. I mean, they, 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 were, they were throwing up buildings like left and right. I'm going, what in the hell is this? What's going on? How many? And, you know, you got... I can't remember somebody, you know, one of my acquaintances worked at the DMV and they're like, oh, there's 220 people a day moving here. And I was like, wow. <laughs> and that didn't sound like a lot, but if you think about it every day. You add that up. Absolutely. That's a lot of people. Over you know, and, and uh, like Texas is pretty spread out, but uh, I was living in Uptown when I was doing the show um, and we would shoot all over Uptown and our studios were downtown um at a place called south side and lamar and uh oh. I, you know i i'm from dallas you know i was born in dallas so uh i'll tell you what that's probably the most exciting phone call that i've ever gotten in my career was them saying hey guess what you're gonna play jerry ewing's son on dallas and you're gonna go home to dallas to shoot the show i was like this can't be real you know and then sure enough i'm shaking larry Hagman's hand and he asked me if I was ready to play ball. He asked me if I was ready to be a son of a bitch. And uh, <laughs> I, said, I said, you got it. I knew I had big shoes to fill. But crazy thing is a lot of those fans from the original watched, obviously, the new Dallas and said they thought that I was more evil than him, which is kind of – that's saying a lot. <laughs> no, you crushed it, man. You crushed it on the show. Um, I, I grew up watching the original Dallas later in in the, you know, more like – I don't know, 87, 88 to, to the end. Sure. Yeah. That would have been like season 10 or something, probably at their nine. It was later. Um, you know, I was born in 79. I wasn't watching it as a toddler, you know, of course. No. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So yeah, it was great to see the show come back, uh, come back around, bring back attention to Dallas. And again, you crushed it on the show, man. It was, it was awesome. Thank uh, you so much. I mean, I, I, I truly, you know, Hollywood is such a weird place, man. It really is. And I can't imagine. Uh, really, I, I can't. I mean, well, you know, you deal with these. With I'm going to watch my tongue here. <laughs> um, you know, I come from Texas and I grew up in Oklahoma and, uh, and moving back and forth from Texas to Oklahoma. Mesquite, Texas is kind of where I was supposed to go to high school. And, um, you know, you come out and, 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 and it's a whole different world out here. And I was so blessed. I'd been here for three weeks when I moved here. I, I originally had the record deal and came out on music and was doing a show called Pop Stars, which is the only reason I ever came to California. I mean, uh, otherwise I was going to play baseball at UT and uh, hopefully play for a living. You know, I was getting drafted out of high school to play baseball and that was my life. That's all I knew. Uh, and then I got thrown into this crazy business. Um, and I, I was green, obviously. and, and uh, But quickly after pop stars um I'm, i came back so i came back after our record so our record label folded came back to la because I, an agent wanted to meet me right or two two agencies wanted me. i didn't even know what an agent was so i was like all right what, what, <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know what if someone wants to meet me i'll, I'll go and, and, and meet them and um signed with one of those agents and three weeks later i booked the lead of a show the lead of a movie and a national print ad for Skechers in the same day. And Jesus. I was like, why doesn't everyone do this shit? This is easy. Like, what the? <laughs> it's not easy. I, I, I realized that later on, but I was just so fortunate. And, uh, you know, I never looked back. Um, but my point is, you know, I, I've been so blessed in the, the shows that I've been able to do. Like, a lot of my stuff has been straight pop culture, Desperate Housewives. Yeah. 90210. I mean, you say those those two anywhere in the world and they know what those are. Yeah. Dallas, you say yeah. that anywhere in the world, they know what that is. Yeah. Uh, I've been very fortunate in the stuff that I've been able to do. But, you know, Dallas was such a freaking great show. It was 
be, I'll never forget watching that pilot at the big premiere we had at the, uh, the opera house in Dallas and, and 5,000 people came. Was it at the, the at the Winspear? Correct. Yeah. Were you there? Oh, no, I wasn't. But that's the, I used to work across, I used to manage a wine bar across the street from the Winspear at the, oh, Dun I know that place. Yeah. 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 Well, if I knew you back then, I would have invited you, bud. Oh. Um, no worries. You know what I mean? It, it was it was a really special night. Oh. You had, you know, it was in Dallas at that at that beautiful venue. I think five thousand people were allowed to come and and fill the venue. And you had Larry Hagman and, and Linda Gray and Patrick. You had everyone there, everyone there. And it was, I mean, it, for me, it was just it was so special, and it was done really well. And to bring back a show that was so loved. Uh, worldwide it's the most watched television show in history and to have a lot of the original fans say this is just as good if not actually a lot better than the original yeah. and i'm not knocking the original because the original is, is it's 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 fun. it's freaking dallas you know absolutely um and then just to have a network just kind of go it, by the way our ratings are great we were a worldwide show we were in 220 countries and to have a network just go eh we're going to just go ahead and do what happens is, is new people come into positions at these networks, right? So they want to make their, they want to make their name known. They want to stake their claim. And if something's not their cup of tea, they cancel it. And uh, that's what happened with Dallas. Dallas, we were supposed to do 10 years of that show. We would still be doing it today. We'd, we'd be on season nine, which is crazy. Um, we all signed on for 10 years, you know, and that's Hollywood for you. People change positions and new people come in and they want to throw their weight around and they cancel great freaking shows. And the arrangement was really good. I was really proud of that show. It was, it was just unique. You know, it was like, it was kind of given like this weird, like inside into maybe the, the, the backstage of like, personal Hollywood and these big movie stars because if you think about it you know like uh, playing Kyle West in the arrangement he couldn't really do anything normal you know I, I don't know if you saw like the first episode he had a yeah he had a uh, uh, a woman who was she would role play right she was his maid she was his cook she was his and she was there to please him because he can't go to a bar and just pick up a random chick it'll get in the tabloids or whatever else and so it was a fun show and a unique show there was some dark dark elements to it uh and we really got into that in season two um and it, season three was going to be so good it, it, the whole story was already written out we expected to easily we, we expected to do that show for a minimum of five five years wow but that's the thing, man. This city, this industry, nothing's a damn guarantee, dude. Uh, even if you're a hit show, doesn't mean you're going to come back. Yeah, as a fan, I mean, you know, I, I know absolutely, right? I talk to all my friends all the time. It's all, what we always talk about. They always cancel good shows. And then other shows, we nobody's. you feel like nobody's watching. They continue to go on. You're just wondering, why? what is the hell is happening? Just the same reason as a fan, you wonder how a movie got made, a certain movie gets made or sure. you know, a certain album comes out. You're just like, how is this person even you know, putting out music, you know, I'm a, I'm a chef, right? So I'm in the, I've been in the food industry for 15 years and had my own business and blah, 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 blah. It's sort of the same thing with food, right? I look around and I know there's, I just wonder how does that guy have a restaurant? Right? <laughs> yeah. How is he surviving? And this other person that's cooking ridiculous food, that's amazing that nobody knows about is struggling, right? I mean, sometimes it just, it's not, I hate to say it, this sounds so cliche, but it's not fair. You know, it's yeah. just, it's not fair and it sucks to be honest. Well, with you. Like, those are politics are a real thing in every aspect of life. 100%, man. You know what I mean? Like 100%. I mean, even in entertainment, some of the most talented people ever will never even get a shot. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, 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 like everything I think in life, you know, whether you're at a, fortune 500 company or or a restaurant or it's all relationship based and politics and um hopefully you can find a way to navigate yourself into those politics but not lose yourself at the same time that's the that's the balance right that's the hard part um yeah. 
you want you want to be successful but you also don't want to trample people on your way there because then when you look back you know what what does that journey look like you know yeah because that's what you'll do whenever you get to the peak you'll you'll think about the journey that it took to get you there so you got to be real careful of what you do i guess just the type of person you are you know i agree man i mean look I, i've worked with a lot of people over my 20-year career and and i've seen the gamut of personalities and oh, egos sure. and stuff and but. you know I, I i've always prided myself in treating treating people the right way uh uh Every day when I come on set, no matter what show it is, I shake everyone's hands. I know everybody by name. It's a family. And, you know, people remember people that took the time to say hello and, and were always nice to them. And trust me, people remember the people that weren't nice to them. And, yeah, it, it, you know. Or probably, right? I think you remember. Of course. I mean. People can be like, screw that person. I'm never working with that guy again or that girl again. And, and that's a real thing, especially in this industry, you know. You um, from Texas, like coming from Texas, Oklahoma, you know, that seems like sort of just things we do, right? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I in general, I just know that, it, that I have a good heart. I'm a good person. I care about people. Uh, I like to take care of people. Like, um, I've been very fortunate. So, uh, you know, I come from very humble beginnings, very humble beginnings. I've never met my father. Um, my mother had me at 18, I think. And, you know, every once in a while to this day, I, I, I tell her, thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you. Because, you know, when, when, when girls get pregnant in high school, like sometimes it, you know, it's like, it's, it, it, I, I'm just glad, I'm so glad to be here. And, and I've had an extraordinary life, but, um, uh, I, the beginning of my life was tough, really hard. And, um, so when I, when I, some, someone, you know, it's crazy. Someone the other day said, uh, and, and I'd never thought about it this way. They go, is it, do, do you not find it odd that, you know, that the world is a big place and there's eight, whatever billion people on it. And he goes, is it kind of weird that, someone on every continent in this planet knows who you are. And I go, I've never thought of that. That's super weird. And I didn't, you know, I, I, I didn't, I, oddly enough, my mother has in, in our old fo uh, photo albums, family albums, she has Josh's TV smile. When I was like a baby, I would do this weird, goofy smile. And uh, she always thought I was going to be on TV. Growing up in Tulsa, Oklahoma and Mesquite, Texas, you don't really see that as uh, a reality. You know, we, we see, we, we watch movies and we watch television. And we're like, oh, that's what that is. That's incredible. I, I, there's no way I could ever do that. I mean, how would I even try? And somehow, you know, uh, the good Lord brought me into this industry. And, 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 and um, a lot of my friends in the, the acting world is so weird right now that so many of my friends that I, that I kind of grew up in the business with and have worked with, they don't know what they're going to do. And luckily I have music, you know, luckily I can do both yeah. because the, Hollywood's getting weird. Wow. I don't know if you've seen a lot of these articles, but a lot of people are leaving. Oh, yeah, I have. I mean, is that, do you mean like moving out of California? You just mean leave, leaving the business or, or what? Do no, you... like, like getting out of California. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. Um, there's some big, which I think I am too. There's a big names moving to Texas. That's... Yeah be a popular in austin specifically um where i'm at love austin by the way yeah it's that's a, where you're at yeah that's where i'm at man i've been here since uh 2014 uh, okay 2014 i moved here just to open a food truck i mean that's the whole reason i moved to the city and i've been that here. was where i was gonna go let's talk about some food out in austin yeah so first of all i so i do love to cook uh, i've been cooking since i was little because nice. because uh i, I kind of raised myself so I uh, make food, right? You had to. I did. I, I learned, you know, experimenting uh, what works with what. And, um, you know, I have a lot of, uh, I love to host big barbecues and big dinners. And I mean, I did Thanksgiving one year for 75 people at my house. Nice. Uh, cooked two different kinds of turkeys. I did a honey baked or a, a, a ham, uh, probably 20 something different casseroles and sides. And, um, 
I enjoy it. You know, for me, I'm so ADD and my mind never stops that there's only a couple things that I can do that will help me slow down. And cooking is one thing. I enjoy it. It helps me kind of just zen out. And, and uh, I really do enjoy cooking. I mean, I, I just, you know, I think it's great to, to make something that someone else can get pleasure or joy out of consuming, I guess, is, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I really do. And, and, and yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So you're in Austin. I was in Austin for, uh, yeah, South by a few years ago doing promotion for the arrangement. Nice. Um, that was the last time I was there. Uh, and I, I went to, okay, there's a barbecue place right downtown. It's right, like, it, 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 it's a big place. Lineup. Yeah, yeah. Um, iron, iron something. Iron. Uh, it's off a of Red River. I mean, I know exactly. It's an old. It wasn't. Oh, like a little stream, like a little river thing there, or no? See, I didn't go to that one. That's supposed to be. Is that what? what okay, if I'm going to Austin, where, where, where do I go for for good Texas barbecue? Look, I'm not. I'm not trying to. <laughs> call anybody out but anybody local knows that's not really the barbecue you go to sure it's like the touristy one um i think you're talking about a different one than i'm talking about though because uh, I, I did see that one there's so many yeah sure here in austin it's like honestly i i don't know which one you went to to be honest with you if it yeah i'm just trying to wonder god downtown i don't know um there's franklin's which is probably the most popular that people know about and you know okay line down the street every day yeah. yeah till the pandemic put a stop to that i don't know if that'll sure. come back but i would say i don't know my my favorite in town is um a place called brown's barbecue okay. little food truck off of uh lamar is that that guy that's like he's he's on the food channel all the time he's he's, he's pretty much known for for his truck he's in austin I've seen him on, I mean, I've seen him on countless shows over the last year. You know who I'm talking about or no? I don't know. Um, okay. There's just so who many cares? here and so many, no, no. I mean, there, there's so much, look, this is what I tell people, you, you, you know, you know, dude, you're from Texas, you know, Barbara, yeah. to be honest with you, you're never really going to go horribly wrong, right? Like it's True. never, you know what I mean? Like even the mediocre barbecue is still way better than what you're going to get if you go somewhere else that they try to give you barbecue and you're like, this is a joke, you know? So I, I don't know where to get barbecue in LA, period. Uh, apparently there's a guy that like... I've heard that though. Apparently there's a guy uh, on Instagram. He started his business on Instagram uh, like doing orders, right? Like you would take pictures and blah, 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 and you could DM them and he would, you would send him money and he would send you barbecue. Um, and it became so ridiculously popular that he now has, I think two brick and mortars, uh, restaurants because he's legit. Now I haven't tried it yet. And I unfortunately don't even know exactly. I can look it up and figure it out, but I, I don't know exactly what his name is or what the, what the restaurants called. But, um, yeah, barbecue's not really big in LA. That's that's definitely it's definitely not you know. Obviously, there's incredible restaurants here. Sure, absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, yeah. What so what 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 style of a cook or chef are you? What do you do? I did uh, my my place was called Boca, and we did Spanish food with a little Mexican Texas twist to it. My my, Love that. I lived in Spain for a few years. My wife is Spanish. Um, so basically that's what well, that was it. We moved back from Spain to come to Austin. So, you know, we opened up this business and then the more, as I did it, I realized, okay, I'm, I'm also half Mexican. My mom's from Mexico city. So I grew up with that food immensely in my life, to be honest with you. So I realized, okay, let me start mixing this all together. And of course I grew up in Texas in the Dallas area. Yeah. Well. So I thought, okay, I'm going to put some of that influence in as well. And that's what it became. You know, we, we sounds great by the way. It was awesome, man. We, we I, look, I had, you know, I did it for five years. I actually closed it last year after South by. So last South by was my last big event I did for Showtime. And yeah. last, you know, yeah. hurrah, I closed the business. And thank God, honestly, I think about it now because oh, we're right now is a nightmare. All my friends are I just, they're struggling, man. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of my friends of are struggling with their restaurants and food trucks and catering, right? It's just, there's no events. They can't cater. There's no yeah. to go is not the same takeout. It, look, it, it provides a little revenue, but 
it's just it's just not the same you know of course no i mean um I, I, like so in la i don't know what's like in texas right now i was in dallas a few months ago and they uh i was there when they opened up so they were allowed to i think have me at 50 percent capacity or something and what's funny was is most of these restaurants they would put the 50 percent capacity all out on the patio so the patio was 100 percent capacity everyone's sitting right next to each other but uh whatever um uh but it is a tough time man i mean uh, you know one of my like i call it my cheers bar it's called uh, residuals out here there's a bar called residuals um I like that name. and it, what's that so i like that name that's a cool name. what's cool because what's what's cool about it it's so it's been open since 1986 and it's, it's kind of an odd bar. You walk in and like to the right, there's a bunch of tables that looks like it could be a fucking Applebee's, but you know, it's just a bar. They don't even have food there. You know, you're like, what was this? Like, what, what is, what's going on over here? They got two dart boards. They do karaoke. So it's become like the karaoke Mecca of the Valley in LA. Um, 1986, it's called residuals. Uh, their thing is um, if you bring in a residual check, for under a dollar, like that was like, you know, in your name for under a dollar, they give you a free drink. And then they put the residual check on the wall, right? They staple it to the wall, which is a great freaking concept for LA. And, uh, you know, it's, it's actually awesome. Um, and it's sad because they don't serve food, meaning they can't be open. And uh, they might have to freaking go out of business. And it's like our spot, man. Uh, you know, and they've been there, like I said, since 86. And, uh, uh Project. They, they obviously, you know, rent rent is crazy, especially in LA. They're on Ventura Boulevard, which is like prime real estate, and uh, it's a staple, man. And 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 it's a it's it's just it's it's a sad time. Um, but to, to to make a segue real quick, you said Mexico City. Yeah. Um. So, have you heard of Javier's in Dallas? Javier's. It's Mexico City style cuisine, and it's my favorite restaurant in Dallas. Okay, right on. Have you, oh, you've never heard of this place? No, I, I, I can't say that I have. Uh, it, it's been a long time since I lived in Dallas, man, to be okay. honest with you. It's, uh, it's uh, I mean, every time I go to town, I, uh, Javier's, it's a must do, right? Um, so they don't have, like, tacos and enchiladas and stuff. Like, uh, their popular dishes are, like, um, the canteen floss, which is a fillet stuffed with cheese, uh, red snapper. Um, they 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 give you a green salsa and a red salsa. The green salsa is like kind of warm, and you dip your chip in butter before you put it into the salsa. It's just like, and the the atmosphere there is incredible. He is Javier. He, he the actual guy is there every day. He counts the money every night. He parks his Ferrari right up front in his spot every day. Uh, <laughs> I've heard he, I've heard I, wow. I've heard how much money he makes. I won't put that out there, but he does very well. And uh, people have been asking him for twenty years to be able to open up another Javier's here. Then he's like, I don't need to. I've got my restaurant in the back. It's a dope ass cigar lounge, tequila lounge. I mean, this place is awesome. Massive deck outside, the like patio. Margaritas are great. You know, it's just because uh, when you said Mexico City, I was like. Uh, I don't know what that is, but <laughs> I love it. I love I'm not gonna answer that one. Anyways, um, I don't like when people come to my door. I do not like it. Either man, I'm the same way, dude. I I don't like that shit. Don't. Why are you knocking at my door? Why? <laughs> I didn't get no text message or phone call. Who are you? Totally. I don't like people dropping in unexpectedly at my house. I'm the same way. Yeah, I had a bad bad situation happened to me that was a case of mistaken identity and whatever else and uh they legit have ptsd from it because i was you know cops kicked my door in and it was a terrible situation and and uh i had no idea what the hell was going on yeah and yeah, that sounds horrible that that <laughs> sounds horrible well, the oh. problem with my life is is that i didn't know what was happening it happened it was, it was it, by the way it was two o'clock in the morning and i and i was woken up with like shotgun in my face 
<laughs> so, oh no, I thought I was being murdered. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I, I would have shit the bed, honestly, I think. Am I... No idea what was happening. Um, it was so over the top, so ridiculous. And I didn't know. I, I thought maybe there was like a shooter in the area and they were like just trying to clear everybody out to like, you know. Um, it's kind of freaking me out. Who to, uh, <laughs> anyways. Uh, I, I, I don't blame you. Well, you, you, you realize pretty quickly that no matter what the situation or how good of a person you are, you're at the mercy of, I, I could do nothing. These fools had me in handcuffs and took me to jail. And I'm sitting there going, what are we doing here? What are you guys doing? And it was, the, it, you know, we won't go into that stuff. There's a lot of crazy things happening right now with police. And, and I, I do respect authority, but it, 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 that situation showed me really quickly, really quickly that like, they can do whatever they want and it doesn't matter who you are or what you have done or haven't done. They can do whatever they want. So yeah, I had, I had, I had a little PTSD for a while. I would like just, it, it was awful. Um, and, and with my life, the next day it was on TNZ and, um, it's just, you know, it was, it was, it was a shitty deal, but, um, yeah, that's, I don't know how, oh, we got on this because my door rang. Yeah, like I don't trust that shit anymore. <laughs> oh, I, I don't blame you, man. And, that, and that's the thing with, be, you know, someone in your position, right? Someone that's had the success that you've had is that you have to worry about if something happens in your life, now it's going to be in the news and now everybody's going to know about it. And, that, and me is like just a normal part. Like that's something I even worry about. I can't imagine having that on top of, right? Like I just can't imagine that stress, man. So, you know, I'm sorry. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was really awful. I mean, I, it, when I, when I knew that, like, I didn't know what they were talking about and they obviously have the wrong person and, um, they shut that jail cell on me and I was going, is this for real? They took me out of my bed. I have no idea what's happening. And now I'm in jail in LA, LA County. <laughs> Did you think I was, terrified. I was terrified? I, I, I was terrified. I, I heard what they were accusing me of. Yeah. And it was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And I could have sued them. I could have sued the, the building that I lived in at the time because they allowed this to happen to me. Um, but I just wanted to move on. You know, I didn't want to drag out something that literally had nothing to do with me. And, and luckily TMZ is, they've always kind of, they've always kind of been a fan of mine, I guess, in a way, meaning like some people see paparazzi and they're like, you get out of my face. I talk to them. I laugh with them. I hang out with them and they like me. So luckily, you know, they obviously put the truth out there. And then a week later when, the whole thing went away because they looked at the damn security footage, which they could have done and saw that it wasn't me that, you know, did this deal, uh, put out another article. But that's the crazy thing about my life is that, um, you know, once you, once you get into entertainment, especially if you've become recognizable, there's no privacy anymore. Yeah. That's a tough, and there's good, good and bad, you know, Oh, I'm getting married or I'm having a baby. It's going to be out there, even if I don't want it to be out there or, you know, whatever happens, it's, it's, uh, your life is no longer just yours and in your own bubble. It's the whole world. And it's a, it's an interesting thing to try and wrap your head around sometimes. No, I can't. I, I mean, obviously I can't, I can't imagine. Um, you know, it's probably something you can't, once you cross that line, you can't really go back. Right. Like that's it. There's no, yeah. I mean, in a way, in a weird way, you almost hope so because that would mean that you would have a long career and that you're going to be relevant, right? Sure. Um, you know, but like everything in the world right now, this, this, uh, the entertainment industry is, it's, it's in a weird place, man. Um, and it's always been really good to me. And right now, it's just no one knows what's happening. Um, we, we, we don't know when productions are going to go back in. We don't know when. You know, and so it's just a, it's, 
it's not like a, you know, maybe someone in Ohio has a job. They know they're going to be there for 50 years. And I know like, like my industry is just ups and downs and uh, competitive and cutthroat. And, um, you know, that's one thing. Now you put the pandemic and everything else. And now it's kind of like non-existent. Yeah. So you know, it's just a, it's, it's a crazy time. But like I said, my, this music stuff for me, um, I am, uh, I'm producing a show called Full Circle, which is uh, a music documentary show about me coming back to where it all began, which is the music. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm going to film me moving from LA to Nashville. Um, and, you know, uh, we haven't finalized any deals, but, I, but I, I told you about Dallas, who's a great friend of mine. And I think he and I are going to do some big things together. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just, I'm blessed and fortunate that I can have something else that I do. You know, a lot because like I said, a lot of my buddies are like they don't know what they're doing, and they're like, "Dude, I, I, I don't even know if I have a career anymore." That's crazy. I can't. I mean, I just can't imagine. I mean, that's just so crazy. So basically, it's basically something like you know, all projects are being paused, right? No, and no projects are being greenlit. So it's sort of like even the ripple effect that you know the industry will feel months ahead right because there'll be no new stuff coming out that that's what as a fan i'm curious about you know with that sort of stuff because right it takes time to you know make a project whatever and then you don't of course or whatever so this is crazy right the ripple effect is going to be it's nuts shows are being canceled that wouldn't have been canceled um do you know do you know what pilot season do you know what that is i mean not as well as you do but i'm assuming it's just when they they're deciding on new shows right for for the right. yeah so it, it used to be kind of obviously used to, i mean pilot season was like the gold rush every year for actors all over the world right they would all come to la and try to get a pilot because every network would make 40 pilots so there was so much work out there and okay. and um it, that's changed as well but uh yeah i mean even this pilot season all these shows that were originally supposed to go and be greenlit they're like never going to be seen they're done so it's just um you know you got yeah i just saw an article about caa which is the biggest agency in the world they just laid off like 300 and something people and agents and oh i I read that article too i saw that yeah that's if you're an actor with those agents that means you no longer have representation so then you're like okay now like it's just you know the music industry too is you know look i have a lot of musicians on the podcast that number number one conversation is the touring has stopped you know the that's how you make your money yeah that's how they make their money right all the touring plus you know just they're trying live streaming, right? They're trying this, they're trying that merch, um, you know, and some people are just forcibly, not forcibly, but they're deciding, you know what, we're going to go out and play some shows, Wh- whatever we got to go. We're going to drive here, there. Sure. sure yeah. Up and yeah, it's, it's like that industry as well is, it's just cause live music venues are closing. Austin, dude, they're closing down left and right here. And I was supposed to be on tour right now. Really? I was, uh, to promote the music, yeah, I was supposed to be on tour. It, actually, in Texas, we were going to do, Damn. Um, and we were going to do a whole Texas deal because you know, obviously, being being on Dallas and being from there, I've, I've got a lot of support in that state. Yeah. So we were going to do uh, a little House of Blues deal and hop around, uh, not only Texas but then hit the House of Blues across the country, and um, can't can't do that right now. You know, uh, when are we going to be able to do that? Who who knows? Like absolutely. Uh, you know, I and, and like I just went. I was just in Nashville last week, and I showed up, and I was like, "Oh wait, you guys are still shut down." I was like, "I thought you guys were reopened," um, and they're sort of open, but not really, and they have to close at 10 p.m., which is just weird. And you know, um, for everyone's sake in the world, I'm just excited for this all to be over, and we can figure out a solution so that we can get back to normalcy. Yes, because. You know, mental health is a real thing, and this is not this is not good for a lot of people. I agree. 100, yeah, a hundred percent. I totally yeah. Agree with that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's no good to be stuck inside with. Uh, you know, my wife always tell right. Like my wife knows I'm not good with with uh, free time. 
you know, it's yeah, like, it's not good for me. Not too much of it. Um, yeah. Oh, you know, I'm kind of like you. I'm, I'm antsy. I've, I've got like, you know, I've got to do something, right? I got to stay busy, something to, you know, help calm me down or whatever. Um, and yeah, there's just so much time right now, right? There's just so much you want to do things, but of course, too much to do, you know, and at the same time, I want to be safe. I, I don't want to get sick. I don't know what's going on. And when I don't know about something, right, like we were talking about earlier, it's hard to know what information and I'm with you. Like, I get it. I, I don't know what the fuck. So so then I just take a hard line stance of, well, then I'm just going to protect myself for whatever. Sure. And right. And 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 just go with it from there. But there's only so much. I mean, how, how long or, you know, how long can we truly just stay like locked indoors and everything stay closed and how long can that last without any help coming down from above? You yeah, know? I mean, i i get I get messages every day from fans, uh, you know, telling them that they want to see more of me, kind of just spreading inspiration or talking because they need it. Because, um, you know, there's a couple ways to look at this whole deal. Uh, one way to look at it is, is we have never been able to slow down this much, you know, life, life moves. And most people are, are they're, they're just, they're just, they're, I got to go to work and I got to go to here and I got to do this and I got to do this. And when, especially in LA for a minute, because it was not only shut down, but it was also a, like a stay at home order and a curfew, you know, when the protesting stuff was happening. So you actually couldn't leave. Right. And so, I was able to, for a minute, appreciate the fact that I didn't need to do anything. You know, that I didn't have anything to do, so I'm gonna just try and relax and try and, you know, it's almost like when, you know, I, I like to sleep in, I'm a sleeper, you know, but being, being an actor, uh, especially when you're the lead of shows and films, you're in almost every scene, you're gonna be there every day at five or six a.m. So. I look at the times when I'm not working as a time that appreciate the fact that you don't have to be up at five o'clock in the morning and working 16 hour days, just enjoy it because life is short. And, you know, so yeah, it's a scary time and it's not a good time for a lot of people. Um, but I try to promote the fact that it's all happening for a reason, for some reason, and none of us can really understand it or explain it, but just, just really try and evaluate your, yourself and your life and, and, and people and, and the things that, that are important to you, whether it's family and friends and, you know, uh, your dog, like whatever it is, just impre appreciate the fact that you can try and uh, uh, focus on the real stuff and not worry about all the world stuff that takes our attention pretty much every day of our lives. <laughs> That's great advice, man. Absolutely. That's you know. great advice, man. That's, you know, that's what we should be doing. You know, it, you got to take advantage during this time, you know, learn a new trade, learn a new something. Um, take yeah. it, this is a good opportunity to start, you know, taking care of your health, eating better. I'm a big proponent of eating well, obviously, as a chef. Yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, just staying healthy, right? Especially during right now. Um, and like you said, enjoy the moments you know, with your family and, um, you know, if you got kids or your whatever, your brother or your cousin, right. Anybody, uh, just staying in touch with them. And like you it's said, important. yeah. I mean, letting know that you get, let, let, let people know you're thinking about them. You care about them that, uh, that yeah. hope you're well, if you, you know, if you want to FaceTime, if you want to call and just hang out and talk, um, you know, we have time for that right now. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? Yes. I, I, so, the things that maybe we usually take for granted because we're too busy we're too moving from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. It's like it, it, everything did slow down. And as of right now, a lot of this is out of our hands too, you know, like, yeah, like we, like we, we, we can't really control what's happening. Like we, you and I don't have a say when restaurants and bars and places can open. We don't. So, you know, try and, maybe just cultivate the things that are real and not the things that are distractions. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and as I keep promoting on this show here, eat local. That's my big thing. Always hashtag. I agree. <laughs> right. I agree. 
Yeah. I mean, I spend more money eating out and entertaining than, uh, <laughs> but I enjoy it. You know, like, like I said, I enjoy cooking too. Yeah. But if I yeah. cook five nights in a row, I'm sick of doing the dishes. Let me get out and let me get out and get some, you know. Yes. You got to support, right? There's people out here independent. You look, I'm all about the small independent, you know, chef that opened his own place because that's what I did. So, like, I, I want to support people like that because that to me is the best meal you're going to ever get is from that person. They care, yeah. care about it the most. They're most invested. They spend so much time and boom, there's sliding it right to you there's just nothing like you're just not going to get that from a chain you're not going to get that from just these other places it's just not going to happen so like you said i agree that relationship with food it's just you know it's important so yeah i think you know supporting local man and that helps then support the local supply chain as well which are the farm of course right and everyone else that's helping bring all this good natural food um, you know, that you should be eating. And to be honest with you, Josh, I'm not even sure if you're aware, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, and this is a good thing that's come out of the pandemic as far as food. The local supply chains all over the country have immensely grown and gotten stronger. So farmers are reporting 500 to 1,000% increase in sales across the country, man. So if they Wow, I have not heard that at all. Absolutely, man. So if there's any positive, it's that. It's that farmers are, are literally having record sales right now because they're opening up the doors to how they get them the food. So before people look around, right? You let's say you just live in whatever city you think, how do I get food from a farmer? I, I where do I go? Okay. I go to a farmer. Yeah. I go there, but what if I just, I want to make it easier. Well, now they're direct sales, right? So now you can go on these websites. You, they'll send you a, a box rather farmers are doing deliveries around the town locally and bringing you a farm box right to your table right to your door that was happening sporadically you know there's apps and this and that but now it's so much stronger because of the pandemic right people needed food grocery stores are selling sure. so people turn yeah. to farmers and i've had a lot of farmers on the show uh here in the beginning of the pandemic and that's all that we were talking about so it was a great thing it was a weird thing to talk to them like you know, places are struggling food plate, but not them. They're doing better and it's strengthening. And I hope the, the hope is that that stays. That of course, still means yeah. after the pandemic, right? That, that some of that still does. And I, I think it will because the prices really aren't that different. And honestly, the more the farm sale sells and builds a relationship, their, their prices can start to come down and, and be more right. Like with volume and with sure. that built and with the idea of future sales and you can project then you're able to you know adjust your pricing a little bit so it just makes it it easier because i hate if you go to the store and you notice something organic versus something not the price is so different it shouldn't it's be crazy yeah it's like you know an avocado is 99 cents and the organic one's 450 it's like, <laughs> what in the world <laughs> yeah. i mean absolutely crazy is this avocado gonna make me taller like what's going on here <laughs> that's funny that's funny. is there uh are there are there decent farmers markets in austin oh yeah man yeah re yeah re good ones really good ones they, they put them in like um you know just downtown right in the middle of the street right on sundays and saturday oh, that's great. i love that yeah it's awesome yeah it's awesome. i love that what about a uh, random question for you in austin is there uh do you have an indian food spot you like oh that's a that's a great question um yeah I love Indian food. There is a lot of good Indian spots here in town. I would say ooh, uh, Garage Mahal is a really good one. It's on Rainy Street. A great name. Yeah. <laughs> great name. Cool, uh, cool spot. You know, old part of Rainy with the old houses there. That's one of the busiest spots in Austin. Okay. And spot. Um, and there's some food trucks off of South First that don't really have names, to be honest. Yeah. It just says like Indian, right? I'll just say like Indian food. That's my favorite places to go, man. They don't have they don't have social media. They don't you just nothing. You just gotta know where they're at, cash only. Show up. Yeah, there was a there's a little spot. I I, I said last time I was there was for iHeart, but it was actually uh no not iHeart. Um 
South by, or, but it was iHeart. So last time I was there, I uh, presented. Uh, I'm buddies with Dan and Shay, the, the, the country music guys, and I. I uh, so iHeart has their country festival, or at least they did that year there in Austin. Um, and we uh, a- after the uh, after the show, we all went to. I, I, you know, I can't remember. I feel like it was somewhat near downtown, but stayed in a big new hotel. But there was all these like food trucks and stuff, and I had probably some of the best chicken tikka masala I've ever had at one of those trucks. I, um, uh, but I, I wish I knew the. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? It's like an outdoor, like a bunch of different little food venue vendors, and like I think there's beers and stuff out there. You know what I'm talking about, or no? I'm trying to. I mean, there's lots of places like that here. No, that's a th- okay. There's probably ten different places just like that that have that food trucks and and even and I'm talking about downtown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is great. That's why I love Austin, man. Austin is built on that. It's like every, that's the, like, I'm not saying I would trust a food truck and I've owned a food truck, man, for years. I'm not, I honestly wouldn't trust a food truck in every state and every city. Yeah, of course. I'm not like that, man. I know what happens. I know the corners that I've seen other food truck owners take. I'm not, don't tell me that. I'm not calling anybody out. Look, that's the reality. Look, there's, there's, there's people that call it in. Right when when you're acting right in the scene, there's actors that call it in. They're, you know they're not giving their best. Same thing with food. There's people that I look. I know you're not giving your best, and that sucks yeah. because you ingest that stuff, right? Like you eat the food. So to me, that's a bigger disgrace if you're gonna fuck with food. So I'm a real big proponent of like I'm like Chef Ramsay from Kitchen Nightmares type of guy. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that stuff because you're, you're dealing with people's lives, man. It's not cool to screw somebody over on food or. Uh, promote one thing but serve another that's a big thing in the food industry that of i course. hate right I, I, yeah i mean you know it, it, that and you know you're serving bad stuff i mean we all know food poisoning is the worst thing in the world so <laughs> yes yes it's so bad. and i'll tell you what i've had it twice and it was both from taco bell at the same location <laughs> it's like, <laughs> not kidding and you know it's crazy like yeah it, you know I, it, it was the worst experience of my life the first time i had food poisoning and i was like i'm never touching that shit again <laughs> two and a half years later i'm with all my homies we're all hammered yeah and we and they pull into that taco bell and i go i don't know and i ended up getting a damn steak quesadilla and sure enough i got food poisoning again <laughs> sorry taco bell but i but canceled no, uh, uh, look, it's, it's widely known. I'm not a fan of Taco Bell, nor do I promote places like that. Because, again, um, real food. I'm all about real food, and there's no way I would ever suggest someone go to Taco Bell or say that they serve real food. Because they don't. I, you know, it's just that, yeah. that reality of – it's just reality. I'm, it's not making anything up. It's not being mean. It's just, you know, you got to be real, right? If they were serving – anytime a place set, tells you they're serving real meat – that's not a good place to go to. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this: you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, then you're not gonna be maybe happy about this. But I am obsessed with, and sometimes have dreams about, because I loved it growing up. Uh, Taco Bueno. Just gonna say, just putting it out there. Look, uh, I, I'm, I go, I look every once in a while. I find myself in one of those places. I admit that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, every six. I, I just, it's, it's a nostalgic thing for me. Yeah, totally, dude. You know. I, 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 there's a taste to their tacos and I get that Mexi dip and chips and, you know, freaking Chalupa or whatnot. Oh, way better than Taco Bell. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I love their red sauce or salsa and everything else. Um, but yeah, uh, um, but I, but I do, you know, I, I personally, so I, I know of a lot of good, um, farmer's markets out here. Um, I, I go to one that's right down the street every Tuesday and, uh this guy makes uh crazy homemade salsas and he makes his own chips and he sells them and and, and i'm just i'm obsessed with it. he has this ghost pepper salsa that's just like ridiculous it it's hot yeah that's that's, that's no joke dude yeah that's- but uh <laughs> but it's it's just but there's so much flavor in a freaking cup of salsa i'm like you know but anyways uh, i i do uh, there's, there's great farmer's markets out here. And, uh, and, you know, I, I think in general, LA is kind of, um, pretty darn health conscious, you know, it's one of the more health conscious cities, I think, you know? Sure. Um, oh, there's a lot I mean, of I, 
there doing great stuff, man. I mean, it's still, yeah. right? Like LA is no New York, LA, Chicago, Miami. Sure. You know, I'm even going to throw Houston, uh, Dallas, Austin on the map there too. I'm a little biased, but, um, they're there. I mean, look, the most honestly, dude, Texas just got its own James Beard category, Texas wow. whole, because the, the food that comes out of Texas is just, it's, you know, it's just different, man. It's just a, it's just a different, there's so many El Paso, right? You've got El Paso, San Antonio, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, Houston, right? That's no state has anything. Remote yeah. Like that. So yeah, Texas got its own just this past year, which is a big deal because there's so many Texas chefs competing for like one spot, right? Yeah. Like it, it, it's, it's not really fair to some of the other categories. And, you know, as you know, James Beard is like, for a chef is like winning an Oscar, of you course. know? I've never been nominated, nor will I ever be nominated. I'm not that good a chef. I'm more of a comfort food chef. Okay, I'm not. Which a, is great. I'm not a tweezer chef, as we as we would say. Um, you know, you know, like to win a James Beard these days, do you, like, uh, do do you have to like, you know, like do gastronomy and do all these other like, do you have to do stuff and like, like that that's just kind of like you know, out of the norm, that's just more of a like wow factor than just taste. You know what it's about? A lot of times a James Beard award, like the chef is, it's a little mixed bag, but it's usually something innovative they're doing and a movie yeah. they made it. So that food can be anything. Like like Franklin's barbecue, for instance, it's barbecue, okay? He's not, I mean, it's literally just barbecue. He's doing brisket and, uh, but he's a multi James Beard award winning chef. But sure. the thing with his barbecue is it's literally the best barbecue in the world. And he's taken a scientific approach to it and created this whole movement behind this barbecue. So that's why he gets a lot of attention and it's delicious. And he, t he took his time with it and made it right and blah, blah, blah. And then, but on the other side of it, another Austin famous chef, his name is Tyson Cole, and he owns a place called Uchi, um, also a James Beard award winning chef. His style, I mean, you're talking about Japanese style, you know, cooking and serving and plating it's meticulous, right? It's like literally nothing out of its, nothing it's out of sushi. Yeah, sushi and Japanese style, you know, food, uh, sashimi, and they do these tasting menus that are, you know, ridiculous. Yeah. So of you know fresh stuff but again just a totally different style so it's really just but again they created this movement this that's what it's about you got to be innovative something familiar with a twist sure sure yeah attention right if people are showing up to eat your food and people are talking about you that's going to get the james beard then they'll come visit you they're going to come talk yeah. if you know what you're talking about and then they vote on you. You honestly have to get votes, probably like getting nominated for an Emmy or an Oscar, right? You got to go campaign. Same, same way. People can't uh, for, for their James yeah. Beard nominations, you know, this, the same way. I've always wondered about, you know, sushi in, in, in Texas. And, you know, I, I was just in Arkansas and we went to a place and I'm like, yeah, let's go to the sushi place. I'm like, where are they getting their fish from out here in Arkansas? What's going on? Like, you know, like, I'm just wondering like, yeah, <laughs> how fresh is it? You know, and I get like, yeah, being on a, a coastal city, you know, you, you, you would assume it's pretty fresh, but uh, I, I'm assuming you're saying there's some good sushi in Austin. hundred percent, man. Look, I'm, oh, nice. I'm probably going to burst your bubble on something and it's probably our viewers and listeners as well. But the truth is, is that it, just because it's on the coast, right, of a city doesn't mean you're going to get fresh seafood. In fact, 80% of the time will be frozen anyway. But you're like, but yeah. we're on the ocean. They, that, that, nobody's walking out in that ocean and grabbing that food and bringing it back. It's coming from whatever the same way as any other place. You, you can, sure. uh, you know, middle of America, furthest away from a water, they can have fresh food fish flown in the same day same fresh that you would get from the coast like it, it's all about just are people eating there right do you yeah. have a good gut feeling that trust your gut feeling that's what i would yeah say. use your gut feeling when you walk into a place if it feels good go for it if it doesn't no don't be ashamed to walk out of a place if yeah there's nothing worse than bad sushi i mean oh, God. right that's the worst Absolutely. i mean yeah and, and yeah to to your point i um i went 
on a date to this spot out here. And, you know, I tried one thing and I was like, yo, this is rank, bro. This is bad. And I sent it back, tried the next thing. And I was like, yo, is this for real? Who's, and we couldn't eat anything we ordered. We left. And I was like, this stuff is, this is terrible. What's going on here? So you're right. You're right. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, this was in LA. Um, uh, and eat that. I'm glad. I mean, well, I took a bite. Well, uh, I'm glad you didn't feel forced to like finish it. Or sometimes people feel bad sending plate dishes back. Don't feel bad about that. I promise you, a good chef wants to know if you don't think that dish is up to par. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they want to know. They want to fix it, and and you're paying for it. What the fuck? You you shouldn't have to eat something that you don't like. Like I'm a big proponent of that. If you're not happy with it, I'll I will immediately swap it out. There's no disagreement. There's no argument. Sure. You don't need to find a hair in the food for me to exchange it, which, which by the way, luckily that never happened to me. I can't even believe that. And so many, I, I just can't believe that never happened once to me, but, um, yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like, is that like a common, like you eat half of it and then you throw in your own hairs on the dish and be like, Oh my God, there's a hair on this dish. I'm not eating it. <laughs> and then like, you know, you kind of got half full and you send it back and you leave with a free meal. I, you know, the hair thing, I get it. It's gross. I, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a reaction that you see a hair and you're like, that's disgusting. But does it, does it so you said it never happened to you in your place. In my, in my, at least nobody came and told me, um, now yeah. I have found hairs cooking before my own stuff. It, it's yeah. happened to any chef. You're going to something at least maybe one time, maybe it only happened, but you know, it's just part, think about it. you cook. I mean, you can wear hair nets. You can do that. You take all the things are going to happen. Mistakes are going. Yeah. To, you just no problem. You throw it out. Start again. Now, I will say this is a little gross. I have been eating food before, found a hair and kept eating it. Just fuck. It. I just plowed through it. Just didn't. I was probably drunk. You know what I mean? Probably just a little drunk. Just like, I'm not going to wait to send back to get more. It's just a hair. Yeah. Not going to kill me. I found it. Uh, it's not yeah. like eating it. I found it. Uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, make sure it's not where the hair is coming from. Yeah, it, it tastes like uh, what, what was that old hairspray rave? Is that what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> We're like, is that Aquanet? What's going on here? <laughs> uh, we were just at uh, I was just at a, one of my favorite spots actually, and and I was with a, a girlfriend of mine, and she ordered a salad, and she's talking to me, and I'm looking at her salad, and I'm going, all right should I say something or should I just grab this thing and run away? <laughs> there was, I mean, I'm talking an absolute massive, like caterpillar with like wings, <laughs> like, like this big in the bottom of her salad moving. Her salad was moving and I'm going, and she didn't notice it. And I went, Hey, let me see that salad. Cause I knew she would scream and probably freak out and throw up and slap somebody in the face. But um, I, I grabbed that bowl and I said, I'm going to go, I'm just going to take it. And I told the, the, the manager, I go, Hey, look at this. Cause the salad was moving. <laughs> I mean, it was like, it was like a straight up bug out of Jurassic park. It wasn't just like, you know, like a little, no, this thing looked like it had been, been on steroids. And I said, uh, yeah, you see that bug? It's massive. And it's just kind of hanging out in the salad, uh, right there. And, um, they blamed it on the fact that they get their stuff fresh from organic farms and the bug probably just came with the salad. I was like, <laughs> that's bullshit. They bullshitted you because that that's true, but you're supposed to wash it before you serve it to the fucking customer. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. One on one. That's, that's I was like, did you just take it straight out of the bag and put it in the bowl? That's basically what they did. So I, look, you're going to find bugs and stuff you get that. That's true. And that's no problem. That's why you wash cilantro and parsley and all these herbs and salad if you're making a salad yes you have to wash the lettuce i mean it's like so it makes me it makes me upset honestly and that he gave you that excuse like this is the oh, yeah we're, we're just we're just so organic and so farm to table that we just pick it out of the ground and put it in your bowl <laughs> that's so bullshit i mean again that's that's true that's that that's probably why it has the caterpillar or whatever it was but yeah wash it and you take out the caterpillar before you give it to the customer they're probably yeah. fine it could have been in the middle of service they grab it out of the bag and throw it in so it could have been both maybe they had 
stuff that was washed they ran out of that so what do you do when you're in the weeds as they call it sure sometimes and you I'm, just go i'm not yeah joking. i used to work at uh joe's crab shack in mesquite texas joe's crab shack that's a uh, <laughs> love it best best crab in town man yeah um, <laughs> and you know i i was so they did they dance at this place you know so that's what they do and when i got there i was 18 years old and i was like these dances are terrible can i re-choreograph these things and <laughs> the guy was like oh i guess so i did that's awesome um, they filmed me record guy and then they sent my film to all of the joe's crab shacks across the country to learn the new dances because i said dances were awful um but i used to uh get so caught up in the damn dancing at the restaurant that i would forget to put people's orders in <laughs> and i would always i would look at a table and be like god they've been here for a long time where's their food and then i would i would realize holy shit i didn't ever fucking put it in so i was like the waiter that the kitchen staff knew i was like yo i need a i need a, a bucket of chicken wings some snow crab legs and yada yada uh, uh, what is it called? There's a term for it when you need it right now. On the, huh? fly. On the fly, yes. Yeah, and they would always just shake their head at me going, this kid is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm like, yo, guys, I'm dancing. You know, I'm performing here. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Yeah, it was... Uh... I'll tell you what, though. The, 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 those wings were pretty darn... I, I used to, like, order a mudslide on people's bills and, like, like, like... I would try to remember to then take it off, you know? Yeah. And I was 15 years old. Like, you know, I am like, loved a mudslide, like whatever. <laughs> and then I would forget to take it off their bill. And they'd be like, what's this mudslide doing on here? I'd be like, oh, that's so weird. <laughs> As I've got like mudslide on my chin. <laughs> no idea. No idea what that is. Well, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that's so funny, dude. I love yeah. Joe's Crab Shack, man. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, man, I, I, first of all, it's, thank you for having me, man. I'm sorry it took so long for me to, to be able to make this happen. I've been traveling so much and. Oh gosh, no, no worries, man. Um, just again, I really appreciate you taking the time, man. I know it's, uh, probably feels good too, to just shoot the shit a little bit and sit back, right? And it does, you know, it, talk to somebody from, you know, from, from home and, yeah. and, uh, and you know, like it, like like we talked about, it's such a, it's such a crazy time right now. So so any time that I could just kind of hang out and you know like like I said, I, I send a lot of messages back to people that that send me messages through social media, and it is an important time I think just to try and support even people that you don't know because this is not an easy time. No one's ever ever experienced anything like this, and um, a lot of people, it's just not good for them. So I, I'm glad that we can kind of come and hang out and laugh and talk about stuff and just uh, try and you know uh, give somebody something to listen to and and, and something to enjoy yeah absolutely man yeah, absolutely. yeah that's why we do this baby so yeah again um thank you so much josh man um you know my best of luck to the music and everything you got going on um look when you got some stuff out and and whatever we'll we'll reach out again we'll have you uh, come on and and we'll talk about any uh you know new new projects you have coming on I would love that. I would love that. I'll make sure and keep in touch. Uh, I think the music stuff is going to happen pretty quickly. Uh, we're trying to get a song um, on the radio by this fall, which is coming up. Um, but I will definitely contact you again, and we'll come on and, uh, and talk about it and hang out, man. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Well, again, um, Josh, my, my best to you and your family, man. Um, you know, Godspeed, brother. Just take care. Be safe there. And um, yeah, man, we'll we'll talk soon. I, I really appreciate it, Josh. Thank you so much. Hey, man, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you again, okay? The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com, and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmer's markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. <laughs>